In investing or business or pretty much anything you do in life, one of the biggest hacks or tips in order to get further ahead is to look at the most successful people who have done it, see the way that they're doing it, see what they're saying about what's going on right now, and just follow, just copy. One of these most successful investors is Ray Dalio, who started Bridgewater, the largest hedge fund in the world. And recently, about a month ago, he said cash is no longer trash. It is now more attractive than stocks and bonds. Ray Dalio has been famous over the last few years back, I think all the way up until about 2018 for saying things like cash is trash. Basically, there's no way out of this predicament that we're in right now that does not involve printing a lot of money. You can find his writings back for years saying that the Federal Reserve would start working more tightly in conjunction with the Treasury to engage in monetary policy that they hadn't engaged in before, printing money, potentially helicopter money. This was all before 2020. And he was right on the nose and it caused a lot of inflation just like any person who is sane would have expected, meaning that cash was trash. You wouldn't wanna hold on to it because you're gonna lose purchasing power in cash. He has now flipped the script saying that it is no longer longer trash and now it is more of an attractive position than stocks and bonds. Now there's a couple things to note about this. Number one, you have to ask what does he mean by cash? And number two, what is the future or at least the near future of inflation going to be? Because financially speaking, many times when people say, oh, cash is paying more than stocks and bonds right now, well, they're not talking about cash, they're talking about treasuries. Treasuries, by the way, are bonds, just in case you didn't know. And yes, treasuries are slightly different than corporate bonds or high yield corporate bonds, junk bonds, simply because the risk of default is traditionally considered lower because all that needs to happen for a default to be avoided is for the government who issues those bonds to just pay them. It's pure political will because those bonds are denominated in the money that that government can control. All it takes is political will. So a default is considered pretty unlikely versus a corporation actually has to produce value and make profits. And so it's a lot more correlated to the actual value that that borrower is producing. By the way, I wanna let you guys know that I'm launching my options mastery course very soon here. You know that my background is in options trading. I love using options. My background is in trading and training professionals on professional level strategies. And the reason why I like options is because they're basically the only tool that is available for individual retail investors to be able to make money regardless of what the market is doing. The market is dropping, market is going up, the market's not moving at all, going sideways, or it's extremely volatile, or you wanna make income on your stocks that don't have dividends, or you wanna hedge your portfolio, whatever you wanna do, or a combination of all of that, options are the only way to go. So bring all that information for you guys so that you can learn how to use professional level strategies for insane profits that you can't do with anything else. If you pre-order this course, only during pre-order, it's available as a bundle. I'm throwing in my portfolio allocation mastery course as well. The link to get that bundle for pre-order is in the link below, is in the description below. Right now, the yield on the six month US Treasury rose at 5.1%. And if you look at this chart from Bloomberg, the bottom red line shows the yield of the traditional 60-40 portfolio, which is 60% stocks, 40% bonds, subtracting the six month T-bill yield, and it is now negative, meaning that that six month T-bill yield is a better portfolio to be in than the 60-40 portfolio. And it's not just the six month. If we take a look at the one year, it is now over 5%. Looking at this chart all the way back to 2009, you can see how insane this recent rise in yields has been for the one year. The recent rise in the two year looks pretty much the same. Looking at this chart going back to the 90s, you can see it broke above the long-term trend line all the way back in April of 2022, and it looks like it is headed much higher from here. And it's the exact same story with the 10-year as well, which is reaching almost 4% again. It exceeded 4% briefly last year and then dipped back down, but 
all indications would point to the 10 year moving back above 4% and maybe even much higher. Obviously, this is mostly happening because the Federal Reserve is raising interest rates, trying to squash the inflation that they produced by printing trillions of dollars. The reason why this works in the long term, if they do it se severely enough, if you think about it, if they raise rates to, let's say, 20%, and you, as a saver, could make 20% by giving your money to the US government, and you can make 20% a year, would you risk anything in the stock market? No, there are safer and easier places to make money than the stock market if somebody is offering a risk-free 20%. So you can see how this pulls money out of the economy, how this makes people save their money, because eventually as those rates make their way through to the average saver and the average lender, that means that money stops getting spent and that contributes to deflation rather than inflation. But this is not the only reason the Fed interfering in the markets is not the only reason why we're seeing interest rates rise right now. You also have to ask, what is the impact of inflation on these rates? And there is a free market impact going on here that is causing rates to increase. If you would have lent money a year ago at 2%, well, inflation over the last year has been 7%, let's say. So you'd have lost 5% on your money. That means this year, you're gonna be a lot more careful and you're gonna want a higher interest rate to compensate you for that loss in purchasing power. So it makes sense that rates are higher right now. The question is, what will inflation be over the next year? Because if you lend right now at 5% for the next year, then you're expecting that the inflation rate will be lower than 5% over the next year. And every time you're wrong about that, that's going to continue to drive up interest rates because people will continue to demand higher and higher interest rates to compensate to compensate themselves for the purchasing power that they're losing. And this will play out until inflation reverses itself. And at some point, rates will get to a point where the average person will say, this isn't sustainable. Like if you could save in your savings account, get a CD for one year and get 16%, 18%. Most people will look at that and say, this can't continue forever. There's just not enough money that's gonna be in circulation. It's gonna cause a massive crash. And what is a crash? It's prices falling. And if prices fall, the inflation is gone. And if the inflation is gone, I don't need 16%. I could get 12% and I could still make money because I don't have to beat inflation anymore. So the future discounting of a recession or a depression or a crash can actually pull forward those expectations. You can drop rates in the present as a result of you expecting prices are gonna be lower in the future. And so even if the Federal Reserve continues to jack up interest rates, if the market expects that inflation will get beaten and inflation will stop, then you won't see the Fed's rate hikes make their way through to market rates like mortgages and auto loans and treasuries. Because if you expect inflation to be at 1% next year, you'd be happy to get 4% at 10 years. You'd be happy to get 3% and for the next 10 years, which means at that point, the Federal Reserve would be interfering in a market and would be keeping rates too high, that their interference would not be keeping rates too low, it would be keeping rates too high. This all proves that we should not have somebody with a monopoly control over the supply and the cost of money. It should be dictated by free market forces because these free market forces have automatic stabilizers built in based on the incentives of what happens when money becomes scarce or abundant. People save it or people borrow and spend. That will happen naturally and it will dictate what the interest rate is, the cost of money, naturally. You don't need somebody in charge of it who is manipulating it for somebody else's gain. But at least for now, and at least in the US, free market money seems like nothing more than a pipe dream. But I guess one can dream. As always, really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.